What if the Generation 9 Professor turned out to be the final villain for Scarlet and Violet? That is the question I have had floating around in my mind since the announcement of the Generation 9 games, and it honestly got me thinking. What if any of the past professors were secretly the main villains of their region? So naturally, I got to work and came up with what I thought it would look like if the regional professors were actually the biggest villains of all. So let's get into it. First up is our beloved Professor Oak from the Kanto region. Being the first games in the series, the idea of Generation 1 games were pretty simple, as were the motives for Giovanni and the rest of Team Rocket. By the way, all villain teams still exist in this hypothetical tale I am weaving for you. Therefore, I think Oak's evil ambition would also be pretty simple. Oak was once known as a powerful trainer, rivaling that of even the Elite Four's Agatha. However, one thing stopped him from being truly great, his inability to catch every Pokemon. So he devised a plan and waited. Why do the heavy lifting himself when children would literally line up to do it for him? As kids came to get their starter Pokemon, he would instill one goal in the minds of these children. Complete the Pokédex. The player character would eventually accomplish this goal, and when he had, Oak's true intentions would be revealed. He would steal all your strongest Pokémon. Now that they are all in one simple-to-find place that he could easily access. Oak would now have the strongest team in Kanto, and you would have to defeat him at his strongest against your own super-powered Pokemon to save the day and prevent him from being the strongest Pokemon trainer in all of Kanto. Gotta catch them all. Am I right? In this finale battle, Oak's team would be the Leftover Starter, Blastoise in this case, Alakazam, Dragonite, Articuno, Moltres, and Zapdos. Best of luck to you 10 year old madmen. I think this would not only make for an amazing story but also a difficult battle that many people would talk about for decades to come. Next up is the lovely and innocent Professor Elm. The Johto Professor focuses on Pokemon breeding in his research. This obsession with the research of Pokemon breeding would cause what I call the competitive evil. Professor Elm would become enveloped with his need to breed stronger and overall better Pokemon. Perfect EVs and IVs, shiny, and the best moves, making Pokemon that are the best that they have ever been. All the other subpar Pokemon that he could get his hands on go in a large underground vault, forever stuck in Pokeballs to prevent them from tainting his perfect Pokemon. Since all Pokemon deserve love and are all worthy of being called our friends, the player character would have to battle Elm at the end of the game to not only free the Pokemon that he has bred to be competitive monsters, but also those deemed unworthy, forever stuck in a box. Now this one is a little close to home for shiny hunters and competitive players, so I am sorry, but I'm not really. His in-game team would be Pokemon that have had competitive spotlight, or just look really, really cool as shinies. The team would be Blissey, Steelix, Tyranitar, Umbreon, Gengar, and Miltank. All shiny. All the most competitive, powerful versions of the Pokemon. This could be everyone's horrifying introduction to the wonderful world of VGC battling. Now it is time for a lighter note with our comic relief villain, Professor Birch. While studying the various types of Pokemon habitats, Professor Birch would learn not only of the intentions of Team Aqua and Magma, but also learn of the amazing Pokemon that is Rayquaza. He would learn of Rayquaza's amazing ability to stop all weather and negate its effects. Finally, he could have the perfect shorts weather forever. He would no longer be uncomfortable with his refusal to wear pants. It would be all sunshine and 75 all the time. He could dictate the weather, make it amazing where he's standing and leave everyone else to fend for themselves. Not thinking about the catastrophic events that could come with shifting the climate of the world so drastically. He would use Team Aqua and Magma as pawns. Let them play their little game. Let them bring out the Behemoth and the Leviathan to fight their mighty battle all the while waiting for Rayquaza to be summoned to end this fight as he has in millennia past. As soon as Rayquaza came, Birch would use a Master Ball and catch the Rayquaza with ease. The player character would then have to defeat him atop Spear Pillar and release Rayquaza from his clutches. Then the player character could allow Rayquaza to do what it does best and stop the fighting of Kyogre and Groudon. 
His team to beat would be the third starter, I am saying Sceptile in this case, Mighty Anna and Linoon, if you know you know, Metagross, Salamence, and Rayquaza, making a pretty tough team out of a very hilarious situation. And now we arrive at Rowan, our Sinoan professor. Through researching Pokemon evolution, he learned many ways that Pokemon could evolve. Items, stones, levels, and even friendship. But everybody knows that. Ten-year-olds can piece that much together. To be the ultimate authority on evolution, he will need to create an evolutionary process never before seen by humanity. To do this, he studied and studied. Years and years that led him to become one of the oldest professors in the Pokemon world. But he finally cracked the code and built a dangerous machine. All he needs now would be the power source for the device. The adamant and lustrous orbs. Once the player character allows him to research the orbs, quote unquote, he would steal them and put them into his machine. A machine that can do the impossible. De-evolve a Pokemon using time and space. He will finally be the evolutionary authority on the planet and will devolve all Sinnoh Pokemon to prove it. You would have to battle Rowan to end his madness, but with one catch. Every time you throw out a Pokemon, it is devolved to its first stage. Your levels would remain, as would moves and abilities, but your Pokemon stats and appearance would shift to that of a first stage Pokemon. Good luck winning this battle. Much like how Volo's team resembles Cynthia's, as does Rowan's replicate Commander Kamado's. His team would be Golem, Clefable, Snorlax, Probopass, Ursaring, and Heracross, making one of the hardest battles you will ever face in Pokemon. Next in the lineup, we have Juniper, the researcher of Pokemon Origins. Through her research, she discovers Pokemon used to be much more powerful before human intervention. The legendaries, the mythicals, the fossil Pokemon. All examples of prehistoric powerhouses. In this version of events, Team Plasma's Genesect research was coordinated and funded by Juniper herself, trying to resurrect the 300 million year old Pokemon to prove her research. However, they could never get the resurrection quite right and had to continually put armor on the revived Pokemon to keep it alive in today's world. Juniper will stop at nothing to prove her point and revive Genesect's true form, even if it means the repeated sacrifice of Pokemon. Her final battle team would all be Origin-style Pokemon. Sigilyph, Golurk, Volcarona, Aracosta, Archaeops, and finally, Genesect itself. Looking to Gen 6, we have the thumbnail himself, Sycamore. Shout out to Elio for this amazing evil Sycamore artwork. Through research, Sycamore knows that Mega Evolution is the key to unlocking the next stage in Pokemon Evolution. He knows it pushes Pokemon beyond their normal limits, and he knows this power can be exploited to become more powerful than anyone has ever seen. His goal is to make a powerful Mega Evolved team and, through force, take the spot of King that AZ so carelessly abandoned all those years ago. He believes that Kalos will never be back to its former glory without a powerful King at the helm, and he seeks to become that King. Through tireless research, he has found unseen Mega Stones, and more than that, a way to force Mega Evolution so that all six Pokemon on his team can Mega Evolve in a battle, regardless of their willingness or ability. To stop King Sycamore from becoming reality, you must first beat his Mega Team. Mega Talonflame, Mega Venusaur Y, Mega Pinsir, Mega Kangaskhan, Mega Garchomp, and finally, the all-powerful Pokemon of life, Mega Xerneas. If you thought Megas were powerful before, you will learn now that they truly are. The researcher of Pokemon moves us up, and his goal is now different. Kakui doesn't simply want to know moves. He wants to use the ultimate move. In the Sun and Moon games, we know that there were three type nulls created. One is stolen by Gladion, one given to the player character, and one... Where? Well, in this version of events, the third was secretly taken, or given to the professor via bribes to Aether employees, by none other than Professor Kukui. He knew that this Pokemon of all typings would be his key. He studied and studied it, and eventually got the helmet to break free of this Pokemon, and artificially created the Z-Crystal of all types. The ultimate Z-Crystal, Nullium Z. 
This Z crystal gives Sylvali, or Type Full, the ability to change its signature move, Multi Attack, into Ultimate Void Impact. This Z move has 270 base power. It cannot be resisted by any type, making it always super effective, as it has elements of every type combo. And finally, can be used not once, but three times in a battle. This is the strongest known Z move in the Pokemon world. Kukui's ultimate team is the third starter, Incineroar in this case, Dusk Lycanroc, Braviary, Alolan Ninetales, Magnezone, and Sylvali. One Z move is tough, but three? Well, that may be impossible. Our last entry is our lovely old Professor Magnolia. Much like how Rose's evil ambitions were misguided ways to improve the world he lived in, so will Professor Magnolia's. Through researching Dynamax and the Legends of Galar, Magnolia learned that there was one Dynamax creature that she heard was unlike any other. The High King himself, Calyrex. Not only can he Dynamax as a legend, his aura is not red like everyone else, it is blue. Magnolia hypothesized that this aura is due to immense power, unlike anything we have ever seen. She believed if she could tap into that power, she could use Calyrex to bring back its bountiful harvests and plant growth and feed not only Galar, but the entire world. This would effectively end world hunger. To make the bulb on his head bloom once more and release the energy to bring the most rich harvest the world had seen, she believed he would need more power. After Eternatus is captured by the player character, she convinces them that this blue aura is actually dangerous to Calyrex, and that it's a sign of poor health. She would know after all, she is the Dynamax Professor. The solution is to take Eternatus to the Crown Tundra and hit Calyrex with his Eterna Beam forcing it to Dynamax the healthy way, of course. But upon being hit, Calyrex begins to glow purple as the blue and red auras mix. He slams into the ground and causes the plants of Galar to go into a frenzy, overgrowing all of Galar and attacking anything they can get their vines on. Magnolia believes that this is simply the beginning, and it will soon bloom and bring food to the whole world, and battles you before you can stop her monstrosity in action. Her final team would be Corviknight, Dracovish, Dragapult, Surfetched, Galarian Darmanitan, and a G-Max Grimmsnarl. That does conclude the concept of what if Pokemon professors were the final bosses. I think this is a fun video and I hope to do a video in the future on the side professor's evil plans if this video is well received. So don't forget to subscribe and tell me in the comments which evil professor has your favorite idea. The comment of this week is from Christopher Edwards. I love hearing when you guys subscribe or when you join my Discord. The Discord gets access to a lot of fun things including, but not limited to, a community private Minecraft server and my hot takes on which starter is best. Your comment and interaction is always super appreciated, Chris. Thank you. If you enjoy this concept video, then be sure to check out this one where I discuss the possible battle mechanics coming in Generation 9. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will catch you guys next time when the adventure continues.